touching the rebate. Okay. Dave here, how are you? One of the modifications I've made to my Stanton bench is a support that actually does two things. It supports the end of a guide rail for the track saw, and it also acts as a guide for the hose and the lead, which has been ticking me off, to put it bluntly. The thing with the bench is that on an ordinary wider piece of timber, a piece of sheet wood like some plywood or melamine, it will support okay. But on a skinny little piece of timber like this, which I want to be able to use if I don't have a capex or a drop saw, I can put a piece of timber in there and cut it on the, on the Stanton bench. These guys hold the guide rail onto these dogs, tall dogs. Now these are tapered at the top as well, so they slide on quite easily. That's the first thing I'll show you as a matter of fact, how to put these on. So a lot of people aren't aware. You tip your rail over sideways and you slide it over the top, down to the position, roll it over like that, and you see it's got a hold of it. Now for a lot of people that'll be okay. As soon as you put your saw on here, down it goes. What I've done will alleviate that and I'll show you how it works. Basically it's a piece of plywood that I've created across on the end. There's a couple of slotted holes here that hold on to a 5 16th T-bolt with a knob on the back. So these T-bolts slide into that T-track that's on the skirt or the apron all across the front of the Stanton bench. And they, it goes on so well. It's designed to accommodate the end of the rail in this rebate. So as you can see there's a rebate here. And also there's a stop here that I put on it to stop the saw coming back any further towards me. So first thing I'll do is I'll pop it on and we'll do a cut and show how easy it is. You can see here's the T-bolt. It's going to go in down here. There we go. How I do it is I bring the piece of timber up to there, put my finger on it, tighten up the T-bolt, that's it. The cushion strip is doing all the work. That's locked. It's not, it ain't going anywhere. Now we'll put the piece of timber in there to be cut. I'm not going to put a mark on it, I'll just do it. Put these guys on, slide it along to where I want it, touching the rebate, down it goes, and that's it. Can you see how nice that is? I love it. Okay, I'll set the saw up. There you go. You can see that the saw is perfectly supported here. There's a stop back here. The saw can't come back any further and cause any grief to me. It's held, the rebate there is beautiful. As I push the hose is guided in here perfectly. Now then all it's a matter of doing is doing a cut. Let's see if I've got the depth done. Yeah, I'll go full depth. It's not going to worry. There's nothing there to catch. Here we go. One. Take that out, put it there. Beautiful. You tell me how good that is. Lovely. All right. So there we go. We've seen that it will work with the TS55. It'll also work with the HKC. Now I'm going to run the HKC across the same track. It works perfectly. I've got a battery in it. I've got it set to full depth. I've pulled back the blade guard to, as a saw to run on the rail. I'll hold it there. Turn it on. Done. The advantage of the HK is that it doesn't have a motor out here that might hit these dogs. Another perfect cut. And of course it's going to be 90 degrees. Okay. One of the other things. Now I'm going to take you through the process of how I built it as well. But here's something else. Say I want to cut something 
that's a fair bit wider than this. This will cut up to around 320 millimeters wide, like I've got it set at the moment. But this piece of panel here, for instance, piece of plywood, which is bigger than will fit in there, I can run it off here. And I've built this so that it can switch around quite easily. Let's take this off, slide those off the 800 rail. They're going to go on the 1400. What I've done now is I'm taking the T-bolt off the cross cut section. I'm going to put it onto the rip cut. Now, when I first built this, I'd only conceived the idea in my head. I hadn't actually made anything. I did a couple of drawings and I had made it. So it only came to this point here. So it only came to there. And I was the plan was to be able to spin it around like this and put it on the end of the bench there. But I wasn't really getting enough support for the hose, which was ticking me off. So I changed the design a little bit and I extended this out. And if you want plans for this, I'm going to throw them in with the Stanton bench plan. And I'll give you all the details on how to make this. It's not going to happen straight away, but I will do it. So I've moved this to there. So now I can slide it into the end here. Now I've still got the headset on because it's got the camera on it and I can show you as I'm going along what was happening. This was on here, the T-bolt was going into this section through this slot for cross cutting. When I want to rip or do sheets that you know are going to be longer than what I can cross cut, I've put it into this slot here and I can throw that onto there and straight away I've got a support here as well. Now I'll need one of those dogs. I need to move a couple of dogs around. So I'll do that. These clamp bolts are pretty important because if you don't use them, you will get a slight rock. It doesn't matter which style you use, you will get a rock. Let's move this one up to here. How quick and easy is it to set this up? I, I love it, absolutely love it. This is something I've been looking for for years and years to try and do, but you know, that's how life is. All right, we shall use a dog there and a dog there. Pop that one out. So I can put my sheet in here. And if I was using the HK saw, I don't need to have that there. I could put it there and there because this HK saw, will, the motor is not hanging proud. But let's start with the TS55. I'll show you what I mean. These are handy little items. I love them. Same principle. Put them on the edge like, like so. And you can see how the tapered ones work brilliantly. And you flip it over and they grab a hold. That spring. Don't try and force them around the edge there. You'll bend the spring and it won't be any good. All right. Let's throw this on. And away we go. Done. How good is that? Just watch that. Look at that. Now, anyone who has a track saw with a hose hanging off the back will know exactly this is the making of this jig. If you want to watch this part, by all means, follow along. If you've got the idea and can make one for yourself, go for it. Here we go. 19 mil ply. I ripped all the pieces of plywood that were 19 mil to one consistent width. But once I'd ripped it all, I had to dock the pieces to length to make up the individual parts. So I did that on the capex and I used the $10 million stick, which is absolutely fantastic. Once I had all the pieces to length, then I had to put them over the, the this main section here. I needed to create a couple of dados. Now, 
my router table is off the edge of my table saw so I utilize the rip fence to hold the fence for my router table so I've made this saddle and you can see me getting out and popping it on there and it makes life so so easy I use the Jessam clear cut stock guys to hold things down as I'm going over because they pull towards the fence and hold things down I've done videos on that if you want to look at those I'll put links up in the corner here there'll be a little drop down and then it was time to glue the this crossover section together before I did I used blue tape to make sure that any squeeze out from the glue as I clamped it up would be on the surface of the blue tape and not on the actual timber so it was an easy situation to tear the blue tape off once the glue had set and everything was fine it was clean this piece of ply on the top this is probably the most fiddly part of the whole job this is half inch ply I created this rebate or rabbit whatever you want to call it whichever country you're from this rebate down here to accept the end of the track and this is probably one of the best parts of this whole design i love that the fact that it works there the saw can slide back over the top there is no area there for hoses to catch so creating that rebate was great then i need to create these curves here and it was a matter again of grabbed whatever i had that was round traced around until i thought that would be an area that would accommodate it once i'd created the curve that i wanted i actually did a photocopy of that actual shape so these slotted holes here they look easy to do and they're pretty easy I made sure I got the right position for them the right height and everything so that when it's all the way, all the way down it's flush with the top this is designed for a TS55 so it's going to be a maximum of 50 millimeter cut so hence the maximum of 50 millimeter travel of this from bottom to top using the drill press I drilled two holes and then I joined the holes together using my jigsaw once I had those holes drilled, I thought mm, they're a bit rough. So I took it over to the bobbin sander and eased the bobbin sander's quarter inch spindle into there and then slowly moved it backwards and forwards until the, the hole was actually quite, quite nice. Once these curves were done, I grabbed a round over cutter out of the drawer there for all the router bits and popped it in the router table and then lower it down how good are these cranks so you can lower it down and have all the control from above the table got it right and then using the grip style push block I held on to it and again I approached the router cutter from the left and moved towards the right this little guy here is the stop block so as the saw is coming back that's where the rail finishes but the back of the saw will hit here so it's not going to go back any further which I just find is a nice little handy thing originally this was also going to be a hose guide for in the rip section but it didn't really work too well hence I added this piece on later on and made this work for the rip and also for the cross cut again using blue tape to stop any squeeze out uh, I glued this to the top and let it go off uh, and then did a round over on there as well I wasn't all that fussed about getting it down to furniture grade it's only a jig I sanded it to 180 and then I used the wax again the, uh, the triple E wax and then buffed that up also with the flies pronounced fleece instead of using the machine this time I buffed it up just by holding on to the, the pad by hand and it did a magic job once I finished the design and I had a go with it I thought there's a little bit of a fault there so hence I extended this section out here and I joined that on with a couple of dominoes I did the mortises for the dominoes to start and then I cut the slot ready and got everything else finished then I uh, glued it up pulled it together and how good is it and now you see how it is and it's working great okay now if you do want to do something like this for yourself I do have plans for the Stanton bench for sale on the web. I'll put a link in the description box where you can get them. I'll throw this design in for free. It's anyone that's already bought the plans off me, send me an email and I'll check back through the system and I'll email these to you. For more tips on this kind of stuff, keep on coming back. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up if you reckon it's worth it. And I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.